Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain a history of violence. This movie tells a story of a man who owns a diner and lives happily with his family in Indiana. However, everything changes when he accidentally defeats the armed robbers at his diner and is accused of being a hitman. What happened to him after the robbery? Let's find out in a history of violence. A history of violence begins by showing two men named Jones and Billy who have just come out of a small shop on the outskirts of town. Since the drinking water supply had run out, Jones asked Billy to come back inside and get some water. After Billy re-entered the shop, he saw corpses strewn and blood splattered everywhere. Jones and Billy turned out to be a gang of robbers who often targeted small shops on the outskirts of town as their target. This is quite reasonable because these small shops are generally minimally guarded, making it easier to carry out robberies there. When Billy was filling the water, suddenly, a little girl came out of hiding. The girl seemed to be hiding there while the massacre was taking place. Not wanting his actions to be caught, Billy took out his gun and did not hesitate to kill the innocent little girl. The scene then switches and shows a man named Tom Stahl, who is about to open his diner in a small town in Indiana. Tom has a son named Jack, who is a high school student. That day, Jack was seen participating in a baseball game and managed to bring his team to victory. However, while in the locker room, Jack was approached by a young man named Bobby who looked annoyed that his team was defeated by Jack's team in that match. Bobby then challenges Jack to a fight. But because Jack doesn't want to get into trouble with anyone, he asks Bobby to stop bothering him and embarrasses himself by saying that he is indeed a coward who is afraid of Bobby. Because everyone seemed to be amused by Jack's outspoken attitude, Bobby finally chose to leave and leave him. Tom and his employees seemed to be cleaning up in the evening because the shop was closing soon. There were only two customers who were still finishing their food there. Shortly after, Jones and Billy were seen entering the diner and ordering food from Tom. Tom then politely told the two men that they were no longer serving any orders because the shop was closing soon. Hearing this, Jones looked irritated and immediately snapped at Tom. Not wanting any trouble at his diner, Tom relented and served them. Tom then told his waitress to go home first because it was late. However, when the woman headed for the door and was about to leave, Billy immediately stood up and blocked her, then treated her harshly. It didn't stop there. Jones then pulled out his gun and threatened Tom to hand over all the money. Tom did not then just stay silent. He can easily immobilize Jones and Billy with one quick move, although his leg is injured from a knife stab. Everyone who witnessed Tom's actions was suddenly shocked because they did not expect that Tom, who looks ordinary and always polite and friendly to others, could beat criminals like a professional killer. After that incident, all local and international media reported on Tom's heroic actions and considered Tom a real hero because he was able to defeat a gang of ruthless robbers alone. Tom's wife, Eddie, then picked up Tom at the hospital to take him home. People seemed to have gathered outside the hospital and greeted Tom as a hero. Even when he was home, several reporters were there to interview Tom, but he politely asked them to leave and said that the action was normal and anyone could do it. When Tom entered the house, Jack welcomed his father proudly because he had now become a hero. Meanwhile, Eddie looked out the window and saw a black car parked not far from their house. She thought they were the media crew who wanted to interview her husband and didn't care much about it. A few days later, Tom's diner is back to operating. But this time, the diner was packed with visitors who wanted to meet the hero. So many visitors came. Eddie even came there to help Tom and his employees, who seemed overwhelmed by serving the visitors who kept coming. A group of men dressed in elegant suits came to Tom's tavern shortly after. Their leader, Carl Fogarty, later referred to Tom as a man named Joey Cusack. However, Tom denied it and said that his name was not Joey Cusack but Tom Stahl. Carl then took off his glasses and asked if Tom recognized him now. He still denied it and insisted that his name was Tom Stahl. Even Tom showed his identity card to him. But Carl didn't care about it and then left the place with a sly smile. After their departure, Eddie then called Sheriff Carney to report three suspicious men who had visited their diner. After receiving the report, Sheriff Carney immediately approached Carl's car and interrogated Carl and his henchmen. But Carl said that he just wanted to enjoy the coffee sold there. After that, Sheriff Carney met Tom and Eddie at their house and told them that Carl was a crime boss from Philadelphia notorious for being very ruthless in carrying out their criminal acts. Even so, Carl and his henchmen always escape prison because they have a lot of money. Sheriff Carney then asks Tom if he has a problem with Carl and his henchmen, but Tom then said that Carl thought he was Joey Cusack. Yet Tom didn't know anything about Joey Cusack. The next day, coinciding with Sunday, Tom decided to go to his diner to calm his mind because it was accidentally closed that day. While Tom was sipping his coffee thoughtfully, he saw Carl's car parked in front of his shop and watched him. Not long after, the car was gone from there. Tom, who thought that Carl would come to his house, then rushed out of the shop and called his wife as he ran to his house. 
Tom then asked his wife to take a shotgun on top of the cupboard in case Carl and his men attacked them. Long story short, Tom finally got home first. Eddie asked about what was really going on. Jack, having breakfast, looked very surprised because he had just found out that his father had a shotgun. A few days later, Eddie and her daughter, Sarah, visited a shopping center. However, when Eddie was busy shopping, Sarah suddenly disappeared. Eddie looks very panicked when looking for her daughter's whereabouts. Luckily, she was able to find her daughter before something bad happened to her. However, unexpectedly, Carl was there. He then told Eddie about her real husband named Joey Cusack, the most feared assassin in Philadelphia and nicknamed the Ghost. Carl tells her that Tom is the one who injured his eye. Eddie, who did not believe Carl's words, immediately took her daughter away. Meanwhile, at school, Jack is seen again being the target of bullying by Bobby and his friends. They insulted and despised Jack's family, even calling Jack's father a murderer. Because they had insulted his family, Jack didn't just sit back and fight. However, because of the fight, Jack got suspended from school and was scolded by his father. Tom then advises his son that violence is not the right solution to solve every problem. However, Jack then replied to his father's words by mentioning the actions taken by his father when facing a herd of robbers. Hearing this, Tom was furious and slapped his son's face. When Tom talked to his wife about Carl, Carl and two of his henchmen came to Tom's house saying that Tom had to go with them to Philadelphia because someone wanted to meet him. They turned out to have taken Jack hostage so that Tom would do what they wanted. Not wanting to endanger his son's safety, Tom immediately said he was willing to come with them to Philadelphia, provided they freed Jack. Carl agreed and then freed Jack. After making sure his family was home and safe, Tom took the words back and said he wasn't going back to Philadelphia. Hearing this, Carl then ordered his men to bring Tom forcibly, but Tom can easily disarm them and kill all of Carl's men. However, Carl managed to shoot Tom in the shoulder during the dispute until he lay helpless. When Carl is about to kill Tom, he asks Tom if he has any last words to say before killing him. Tom then says that he should have killed Carl while still in Philadelphia. Seeing his father in a state of urgency, Jack suddenly came and shot Carl, killing him. Tom was then rushed to the hospital for intensive care. Not long after, Eddie came to see him. She then confronts him about Tom's true identity. With a heavy heart, Tom finally admits that he is Joey Cusack, a hitman who often works for gangsters in Philadelphia. However, he decides to bury his dark past as an assassin and start a new normal life after meeting Eddie, the only woman he has fallen in love with. Hearing this confession, Eddie looks very angry and disappointed with Tom, who has been keeping it a secret from her. After returning home, Tom becomes further isolated from his family and the community. Even Jack looks so disappointed in his father, who turns out to be a murderer. After the incident, Sheriff Carney visits Tom's house to ask about the incident that killed Carl and his henchmen. He seems suspicious of Tom, especially after rumors that he was suspected of being an assassin have spread. Unexpectedly, Eddie decides to help Tom and convinces Sheriff Carney that her husband is completely innocent and not Joey Cusack, who is said to be a hitman. Eddie said her family had been in a lot of trouble since the diner robbery incident and pleaded with the sheriff not to add to their family's problems. Hearing this, Sheriff Carney became uncomfortable and left immediately. In the middle of the night, while everyone was asleep, Tom suddenly woke up after getting a call from a man named Richie, who was from Philadelphia. He asked Tom to hurry to meet him and threatened to come directly to Tom's house if he refused the request. Not wanting to endanger his family, Tom decided to go to Philadelphia alone. Upon arrival, Tom meets one of Richie's men at a bar, taking him to meet Richie at his residence. Richie, the most respected crime boss in Philadelphia, turns out to be Tom's older brother. Tom and Richie then engage in a conversation, where Richie expresses his disappointment because Tom suddenly disappeared during their fight against the gangsters in the city. Tom soon realized that his actions in the past had hindered Richie's success as a crime boss who would rule the entire area of Philadelphia. Tom intends to make amends by returning to being a hitman for his brother, but Richie turned out to want to eliminate Tom once and for all. He then ordered all his men to kill Tom. However, Tom was not a worthy opponent for them. It didn't take long for Tom to finish off all Richie's men alone. When Tom was about to kill Richie, he seemed to want to say something, but Tom did not care and immediately killed him. After that, Tom immediately drove back to his home in Indiana. He finally got home while his wife and their children were getting ready for dinner. Jack began offering Tom food after a tense and awkward moment, and Eddie invited her husband to sit there with them, signaling Tom's acceptance back into their lives. The moral that can be learned from this movie is never to give up on repenting and leaving the dark past behind, because everyone has the right to start a new, better life to reach a bright future in front of their eyes.